welcome back to Get A Life, the program that actually shows you how to live a better, healthier, and more fulfilling life. On tonight's show, we're gonna be featuring all sorts of programs and services and products that actually enhance and maximize your life. We are gonna test drive the incredible futuristic Tesla 2. And then discover a healthy and delicious way to snack without the guilt. And then we meet a health and lifestyle guru whose enthusiasm for life is totally going to blow you away. But first, it's this superfood that has taken over Australia, kale. You can bake it, you can blend it, Let's find out if you can juice it. Hello, I'm Julia. Welcome back to our Coovings Kitchen where I've got another awesome juice for you today. Now for all those green juice lovers out there, I know you exist. Green juices have become so popular in recent years and that's for very good reason. They're really, really good for you. Now it's nice to change up your greens every day, one, so you don't get bored, which I tend to do, and two, because it's really nice to include a whole range of different greens in your diet and in your juices. So today I've got another recipe for you. You might wanna try this one at home. I'm going to be using my good friend here, the Kuvings C7000 Professional, which is a super duper model and you'll just get to see exactly how it juices these veggies. So what are we gonna pop in it? Well, I've got some baby spinach. We have cucumber, which is really, really hydrating. I've got some green capsicum, which really will yield a lot of juice. You'll be really surprised. Some celery. I've got some kale. We've got some lemon and finish it off with a little bit of green apple, which will balance out those flavors and add a touch of sweetness as well. Wow, we look at the color of that juice and look at how much juice it created. Honestly, you saw what we had here, not a lot of veggies, but so much juice. And the pulp is really nice and dry as well, which means we're getting out all the juice and all the nutrition. So let's taste this bad boy. Oh, look at this color. Mmm. That is a good green juice. If you like green juices, you've got to give this one a try. It's so smooth and so clean. There's no pulp in this whatsoever, thanks to the C7000. And that's a really good drop. If you'd like your own chance to win one of these awesome Kuvings juices, then go pop on our website, getalife.tv, and you can enter our great juicer giveaway competition, and you could win one of six Kuvings juices. Mm. Remember, it always tastes better with a Kuvings. Did you know that the most futuristic and beautiful cars in the world bear the name Tesla? And we had the incredible privilege to actually check them out. Have a look. So as we set out, I want to say first I'm very excited because usually they don't let me in front of the camera. So this is a very monumental day for me. It's, a, it's, a, it's an occasion, but I demanded it because after I uh, saw how much fun we had uh, with you and the, uh, the Teslas last time, I said I don't want to be sitting in the back there just quietly like uh, Al has to today, monitoring the sound. I want to get up the front here and experience it uh, from the front seat. So what are we in today? What is this? We've got a new look at the front, a whole new fascia. Um, and more recently, we've just updated the software. So one of the things we try to do with all our technology is not do technology for technology's sake, but ensure that there's a human benefit at the end of it. And so autopilots to make the car safer, but also to provide a better driving experience. But this particular car has uh, sensors, sonar sensors, and a front-facing camera along with a radar. And with the update, which came with 8.0, we were able to ensure that the radar has equal value to the camera. So essentially the radar is constantly mapping um, the world in front of it yeah. to know what is uh, an obstruction and what's not. So it's really clever. And then to turn it on, it's just a double tap of the uh, cruise door. And essentially, I'll keep my hands on the steering wheel because that's what we recommend all our users to do. But the car is steering itself in lane. My feet are off the, uh, wow. off the pedal, cruise is set. It's almost like pulling in front of us and kind of cut us short a little bit. The car will automatically adjust and, and put the brakes on and slow down. And Exactly right. Wow. So 
basically it's reading the traffic around us. So if you have a look at the screen in oh, front yep. of me, it's identifying cars. Oh, wow. And if we come up behind a truck, it'll actually identify a truck versus a motorcycle as well. And even the new software, it will actually pick up a pedestrian walking onto the road wow. as well and identify that and give a warning uh, for you to either um, allow the car to come, uh, start braking or for you to take over and apply the brakes. And from what sort of a distance will the pedestrian need to be to be read? Um, so the camera can read really far into the distance and with the new hardware, the sonar can read up to 20 to 25 um, metres in front wow. of the car. Wow, wow. And we'll see here, the traffic's going to a stop. The car's reading the car in front. Wow. And it'll actually brake for me. And it keeps us at that safe distance the whole yeah. time. And you can change the distance just by a toggle here. And the blue that's being highlighted on the screen in front of me is the data that's reading primarily. So the line markings or wow. the car in front. And we'll turn to the car in front when we come to a complete stop. And our car won't move until that car moves. And so what I was saying was, I think it's ensuring that people understand the purpose of the technology and yep. what the technology is able to do. And by showing the data that the car's reading and giving that information to the user, it allows that user to then understand and realise what the vehicle's doing at any one time so that they don't over relax. And there's so many misconceptions around electric vehicles and what they are and what they can do. And uh, just to prove that point again, we'll, uh, we'll take off from here and see. Okay. Al, hold on, buddy. Last time I really felt my eyes popping through the back of my head, but uh, I feel like we're at the uh, Grand Prix start here. Not far from Albert Park. Here we go. Oh! Oh jeepers! Oh my gosh, that was insane. <laughs> Lucky lunch was many hours ago. Um, well, I think as we're uh, we're moving along now, I say uh, I'm very excited to have gotten from the back seat to the passenger seat. I think oh, now I was going to say now I need to just log on and uh, book for a test drive, and then I'll be on that side and get a chance. But thank you very much, Heat. No um, really, it's 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 always good to catch up with you and. Uh, Thanks for inviting us back uh, for this season of Get Alive. No problem. Good to have you. Get in a Tesla. You will not regret it. Hi, everyone. I'm here today with health and nutrition guru, Graham Johnson, in one of my very favourite places, the kitchen. Graham, what are we going to be making in this lovely kitchen of yours today? We're going to be making breakfast. And Good. breakfast today is spinach, avocado, coconut water, and the anti-aging carpai puku. Have you ever had food? And this is what you do when you eat the food. You go, mmm, 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 mmm. <laughs> and not only does it taste like that, you're going to be doing the poo like a didgeridoo <laughs> with the ease of a Swiss watch. It's going to be like a road accident. It's better out than in, right? Well, that's it. Colon cancer, <laughs> diabetes, yeah. all these things that are gut health. The biggest killer in Australia today is the food that we eat. Yeah, it's so You true. see, when it's sitting in our gut and you've got preservatives and it's really acidic sitting in our gut, you see, this is the benefit of Carpa Puku. Yep. It goes through you and cleans you out and just tastes amazing. 5,000 years ago when the oldest man ever that they discovered in the southern Alps of Italy, they opened his, he was perfectly preserved Maritza, and they opened his stomach and what was in his stomach was seeds. What? They didn't have diabetes back then. They didn't have heart disease back then. And these are the diseases that are killing us. 27% of children today are obese. Harvard University did a study on why do people overeat and they overeat is because they eat too much processed food. Mm. Now the beauty with Carpai Puku is it's raw. It's the way we ate food 5,000 years ago. And with that there, it takes more energy to actually break it down. That's great. What's in it? Well, you've got Siberian ginseng. You've got, you've got a thing called monk fruit because the way it is today, 27% of kids today are obese mm. because you see they're addicted to sugar. Now, I've recognized that. Um, and rather than trying to steer away from it, Maritza, what I've done, is I've got the monk fruit, it's 300 times sweeter than sugar, it's not going to put any load on your pancreas, on your blood sugar, because it's a mogoloid, it's not a sugar. Mm. So sugar has a spike like this and then it brings you down. 
Sativa has a spike down here and has an aftertaste. Monk fruit has the same spike as sugar, so it's sweet. So what I've done is I've just got these natural, ancient seeds and I've sweetened them with this beautiful monk fruit from the Himalayas. It's a beautiful organic ingredient. So you've done a combination in four different products, I believe. That's, that's exactly right. Like the, because the thing is with nutrition, it's so contradictory. It's so in conflict and, it's, and, and there's a little battle that goes and people go, I want to do the right thing Maritz, but I just don't know the right way to go about it. I don't know how to start. So what we've done is we've got something for your stomach. Because our stomach is, it's got, it's got prebiotics in there, so it helps the gut health. We've got a blend for your heart. If you've had a stroke or you've had really high cholesterol, we've got something to deal with that. We've got another one and it's anti-aging. It's an antioxidant. It's one of the highest antioxidants on the planet. There's been a huge focus around gut health lately, I've found, and I think people are starting to wake up to imp how important gut health actually is. Imagine making something and your kids, they just hoe into it like little piranhas mm. and there's nothing left. It's nutritious, it's healthy and there's no sugar in it. It feels so good when your kids actually eat something that you know is good for them and you know it's in their bodies and it's making them thrive. It feels wonderful. I reckon 80% of our struggle when it comes to weight would have to be the food that we eat. Mm. And I think that I've got something that's magic. It's simple, it tastes amazing, and it ticks all the right boxes. Because it was so embarrassing. I used to go out and I'd wear something black, and I'd shake my head, and I'd have really bad dandruff. It looked like I had a salt and pepper shaker no, no. on my shoulders with really bad dandruff, because I had dry skin, I was constipated, I was constantly battling food. Yeah, I think if we treat from the inside, the rest sort of just flows on the outside. Here, here. Mmm. That's good. I like it. What do you reckon? That's beautiful. Nice and um, crunchy. It's a light thing you can have for breakfast. Easy to put together. Good way to start the day. Now you look like a very generous man and I hear you've got a special deal for our Get A Life viewers on your website. Um, I think there's more power in giving than receiving. Yes, for the first 10 viewers, those first orders will get an entire range. So get onto the website, be the first, and change your lives, guys. Now, where can people buy Kapai Puku? Richie's along the eastern seaboard. Go by to Australia. And also, the 380 chemist warehouse pharmacies across Australia. Oh yeah, and online you've got us completely covered. Yeah. I am definitely getting on board with Kapai Puku. I'm going to cleanse myself from the inside out. My hair, my nails is going to look fabulous and I'll see you in 12 months looking probably 20 years younger. And we're going to see more of Graham and his products in the coming week. And of course, there's going to be opportunities to win some of those tasty treats as well. Now addiction. It can be a perilling issue for many people out there and the path to rehabilitation can be a challenging one. Craig Harper explores more. I've decided, I know what I'll do, I'll jump off the bridge instead. You see, part of the insanity of addiction is, is that you continue to use and drink despite negative consequences. Hi guys, I'm here with Nick Hall from Dayhab and we are chatting once again, we're talking addiction. So specifically, we're gonna jump back into some of your story and uh, at a time in your life where you were pretty much at rock bottom. Yeah. Take us there. Yeah, look, I, I guess I got to a point in my addiction where I was, you know, just so suicidal and, um, you know, like I was in a really, really dark place, you know, and um, I was about 24, 25 years old and, mm. and, and I got the idea and, you know, I just, I'd had enough and I wanted to kill myself, you know, I became suicidal and uh, I had some pretty severe attempts, you know, I guess at first I, I um, my mother used to be on these heart pills, you know, mm. and um, she was away with my, my father, they were away for the weekend. Yeah. I got very, very drunk and I decided to break into the house and steal her heart pills, you know, and um, and I got this box, it was a box of 50, you know, and I, I got this box and I, I ate the whole lot. This is after drinking all day. I ate the whole lot and then, oh. and then 
apparently got on the phone and rang my sister and, and told her I was, gonna, I was setting fire to the house and I was going to burn it down and with me in it, you know. And um, um, I woke up um, a couple of days later in ICU mm. in Monash Medical Centre and, um, you know, I, I woke up and I had all of the, you know, like the tubes hanging off me, all the leads, the heart yeah. monitors, all yeah, that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff. And, and my sister was lying on my chest and she was crying, she was sobbing. Right? And she said to me... Um, she said, you know, I want you to promise me that you'll never do this again, mm. you know. And, uh, and I said to her, make no mistake, the second that they let me out of this place, I am killing myself. I'm going to do it. Right? And, uh, and she was just, abs went into a frenzy and she went up and she got the doctors, she called the nurses and she did everything that she could to get me committed. Mm. And um, you know what? I turned it all around. When they walked in? When the doctors walked in, I told them all the things that they wanted to hear. I turned the whole conversation around and surely enough, um, they let me go. Mm. You know, and, um, and so, so they let me go and I, or I had that belief, that, that desire, that intent. intent in my mind that I was going to kill myself and I was going to do it that night. And um, um, as it turns out, um, which is... You know, a funny thing in a sad situation is that um, laziness saved me. You know, um, <laughs> that night um, um, uh, I, I decided I was going to throw myself in front of a train this time. Uh, I was in Glen Waverley. Actually, um, it was uh, just around the corner from this centre. Right. In actual fact. Wow. And uh, my, my idea was to walk down Blackburn Road uh, to Sindal train station. Yeah. This is about 11.30 at night and throw myself in front of a train. And as I walked onto Blackburn Road, yeah. I suddenly got the feeling that, you know what, I can't be bothered walking all that way. It's a few kilometres, you know. It's a long way to walk. It's a long way yeah. to walk when you're drunk. Yeah. But I was actually going over the Blackburn Road bridge over the Monash Freeway. And I decided, I know what I'll do, I'll jump off the bridge instead. And, um, and that's high. That's that's high. That's high, and you're jumping onto a freeway into traffic. And I figured that if I, if the fall doesn't kill me, I'll get hit by a truck or something, you know. And, uh, and I was in such a dark place, you know. Like I, I, it's hard to put into words, you know, exactly what was going on in my thoughts and in and, and in my feelings, you know. But I was just, I felt like the loneliest person in the world. You know, I felt like a piece of rubbish. Addiction destroys lives and shatters families. Hi, I'm Craig Harper, Director of Wellness at Dayhab Addiction Treatment Centre. We all understand the destructive nature of addiction, but the great news is that when surrounded by the best resources and people, recovery, transformation and happiness are all possible. I've seen bodies healed, relationships restored and lives changed. Dayhab's residential rehab program offers recovery, help and hope every step of the way. Thanks, Craig. That's such a fantastic resource for people struggling with addiction. Now, after the break, our self-help guru, Craig Harper, will be back once again with more life tips. Hey guys, I'm Craig Harper. Thanks for taking the time to have a look at this and have a listen. So for the last few weeks, we've been talking about transformation on Planet U. So there are lots of variables and lots of ingredients in the success pie as we've spoken of. Today, I wanna to talk to you about something that's really important uh, and kind of overlooked. It's really fundamental too. And that is our willingness to get uncomfortable to get where we wanna go. So I guess the analogy I could draw uh, is you know somebody who goes to the gym and they go through the motions of going through the movements, they do the exercises, they sit on the exercise bike, they kind of train, but they don't do it with any intensity. They don't work hard, they don't get uncomfortable, they don't push themselves on any level. We're not saying everybody should kill themselves, but we're saying in order for your body to ad adapt or change or improve or get stronger or smaller or more flexible, or more speed or agility or whatever that component is that we're trying to change. In order for that to happen, we need to force that adaptation. We need to stress our body in an intelligent way so there's a response. But a lot of people go to the gym 
and they kind of do the same thing the same way at the same level and there's no real discomfort because they want to train but they don't want to get uncomfortable. And that happens in life too. Um, so one of the things that I do is I, I coach professional speakers and would-be speakers. And the question they ask me often is, how do I get less anxious or how do I get less terrified about getting in front of a group? And the answer is you get in front of a group because when you get uncomfortable, you grow. When I lift weights and I work hard, I grow, either metaphorically or literally. When I do the hard things is when on an emotional and a psychological and sometimes a physiological, maybe a sociological level, I improve and learn and grow and adapt. So if, if our default setting is comfort, if our default setting is I've got to have a safety net, if our default setting is I don't want to do anything new or unfamiliar or anything hard, it's very difficult for us to grow, learn, evolve and adapt. So sometimes in the pursuit of excellence or in the pursuit of better or more or improved, um, the question is not what do you want to do to get where you want to go, the question is what do you need to do. And sometimes the things that we need to do in the short term are not fun, are not comfortable, are not quick uh, and are not easy. But the truth is that that's okay because when you put yourself in that situation where you're getting a bit uncomfortable, one, you're more likely to achieve and two, what you're doing is you're becoming stronger and more powerful and more resilient which means you're going to succeed over the long term. See you next time. Thanks Craig, always so insightful in your fashion sense, always right on point. Now, you know when you've finished your workout for the day or you're in between something and you get that craving and you want a tasty treat, but you don't want to reach for something that's totally going to derail your fitness and health goals. Well, we have some fantastic products to show you that are both healthy and delicious. Have a look. We all love a bit of chocolate, or maybe it's the occasional unhealthy treat from time to time, but sometimes unhealthy snacking can actually completely derail our weight goals. With me today is Sharon, the founder of Slim Secrets, and you've got a few secrets for us today, don't you? I sure do. <laughs> well, first tell me, what is Slim Secrets? Our philosophy isn't about extreme dieting, but finding healthier ways to have it all. And we should have everything, shouldn't we? Yes, we should. Especially when it comes to snacks and treats and food, and you've kind of given us a little bit of that. We, we don't, our products are not about meal replacements, but more about snacks, because we know, most people know what they should or shouldn't eat during meal time, uh, but it's often the snacking that derails their, you know, it healthy does. eating goals. It's and that mid-morning or that afternoon or even really late at night when you want to just go for the candy bar, the chips or the salty, sugary food, and that completely derails your weight management goals, doesn't it? It sure does. I mean, how many times have you found yourself sitting, well, I certainly have, sitting on the couch with a block of chocolate, um, and you don't just have one or two pieces, um, you actually have guilty. a whole... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm guilty of this. <laughs> we, we end up eating a lot of it because the reason being is that those products are actually full of sugar and it doesn't satisfy you and keep you fuller for longer. So what we do at Slim Secrets is provide nutritionally balanced pro products that actually taste good. So they're like an indulgent treat, wow. um, but they're high in protein and fiber. That's so that great. really helps fill you up um, and keep you fuller for longer so that you don't then go and um, indulge on. Yeah. Well, snacking isn't necessarily bad. It's just a matter of getting the right snacks, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very important to snack. Um, snacking helps keep your metabolism going. Um, if you don't eat enough food during the day, for example, it can actually stall your metabolism. So snacking is important, but it's also important to keep the calorie levels um, low when you do have those snacks. Because uh, look, a lot of snacks out there are actually um, the same calorie content as a full meal. So we um, at Slim Secrets have a range which is calorie controlled. So they range, our calorie our products range from about 85 calories up to approximately 160. So, and that's a really good um, range. Everyone's on their own weight journey, whether it's weight loss, building muscle, weight management. All of you, the products you have really do meet people where they're at, don't they? 
They do, they do. We we have a, such a broad range of products. We offer, you know, bars, puddings, cookies, shakes. So there's so many things. So it gives you a choice and a variety. And also, too, a lot of our products are gluten-free. Wow. We've, yeah, we've got a couple of dairy-free. And just finding more and more people today um, are looking for those type of products. Um, I think the true test, though, is what do they taste like? Because I think we all desire to eat healthy and we want healthy snacks, but we often don't don't because of the taste. Absolutely. Our mission when we started, when I started Slim Secrets 10 years ago, was to provide uh, convenient, healthy, um, great tasting products that help nourish and um, a healthy and active lifestyle. Thank you so much for providing us a healthy, delicious alternative <laughs> to all of that junk food that's out there. A pleasure. We'll see you again next week as we explore some more secrets. Thank you. <laughs> For more information on Slim Secrets, you can head to slimsecrets.com.au. Also, for your very own chance to get a taste of the Slim Secret products, you can head to the getalife.tv website or like us on our Facebook page for a chance to win. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at some of the incredible success stories that have come out of the Gym Brew program. Well, today is no different, but we're going to have a look at it from a sporting angle. With me is FIFA qualified coach Tony Samaras. And Tony, you've seen some of these benefits firsthand, haven't you? That's correct. Through this program, I've noticed that all the children that have gone through it can kick with their right foot and with their left foot. They can throw with their left, left hand and they can throw with their right hand. They can use both sides of the body, which is extremely important. And that's building the foundation to become good athletes when they're older. They're using the hand, eye and foot coordination. And is it really important that they actually learn those skills at a young age? Can't they learn it later in life? It's very hard at 15 years old to show somebody how to kick the ball, for example, with their opposite foot. So for example, they're right footed and we're trying to teach them to kick with their left foot. It's virtually impossible mm. to break that habit. And basically that's because they haven't gone through this program and the foundation hasn't been built from them from a young age. In your professional experience, can you tell me the story of the seven soccer players that you trained that are now playing overseas? Well, we've sent many players overseas, but only seven remained. Um, as you can know, it's cut very cutthroat over there, but I'm very, very, very proud to say that six of those seven players came through this program. And that is because they use both sides of the body, they have leadership and they catch on very quickly, meaning when the coach or manager or whoever gave them instruction, they caught on. And that starts from a very, very young age. It's very hard to, to show players that at an older age. Overall, if they didn't have the leadership qualities, they wouldn't have survived in Europe. That's amazing. So you're saying that seven soccer players that you trained are living overseas, they're playing in the European League, but six of them have gone through this program. What is it about the program that you think gives you know, students that extra sporting success? Well, it teaches them balance. And you, even the most basic things, well, they can catch the ball with both hands. So they can catch it with their left hand, they can catch it with their right hand, they can throw it with both hands. You're very hard, you're very hard to coach that when you're 15, 16, 17 years old, in some cases even at 10 years old, mm. to de-coach them and show them how to use both sides of the body. And they learn how to fly, they learn, they learn how to go through obstacles, which is cones from a soccer perspective. And they're thinkers, they're leaders. They know where the ball is going before it comes to mm. them. And that is the biggest challenge for any coach to coach any player. Well, that's it for this week's episode. I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for joining me here at the gym. But now it's your turn. It's time to turn off the TV, get off the couch, get out there, and get a life. Uh, what are we at? I think we're at week six. Is that right, cameraman? Yes, it is. He's done week six. So for the last five weeks, we've been talking about. Rolling two. Rolling two. Rolling two. From the brilliant people at Made by Fresco, it's a fruit infused water bottle and the thermo flask has a quality that is unmatchable. From the brilliant people at Made by Fresco, it's a fruit-infused water bottle.